Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. <laughs> okay, my name is Lloyd and I would like to welcome you at Capstone Center of International Studies. Um, okay, can we hold on? Let's check. Okay. So I am also the International Marketing Director of CCIS here at United Arab Emirates. So at the end of our session today, we will be able to learn about menu planning and selection principles, consideration of nutritional principles in menu planning and food service delivery discuss the importance of the cost of food varieties in various recipes and how this affects food purchases, and explain the methods of menu sales, the merchandising of the menu, and food service equipment analysis. Um, before anything else, I would like to introduce first our keynote speaker, he holds a Bachelor of Science in International Culinary Arts and Pastry from the University of West London, a specialist in patisserie and confectionery and a professional cookery. He has been cooking in award-winning international restaurants in Dubai, Cape Town, London, and Algiers, as well as chef patisserie to the royal family of Abu Dhabi in United Arab Emirates. He is trained in hazard analysis, critical control points, control of substances, hazardous to health, and relevant food production and food service management. So please join me in welcoming one of our finest professors, of CCIS, Chef Islam Charles Rias. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, after that introduction, I'm very happy. Um, so yes, as, as uh, Lauren said, I am the, um, the trainer, basically the faculty for uh, Capstone Center of International Studies for Hospitality Management. So I will do some of the hospitality management studies and I will also do some of the practical if there's going to be future cookery or bakery classes online I will also deal with that okay so um, let me see if there's anybody else I can admit okay right so let's start with our topic today so as we said that today we're going to be talking about um, menu planning now menu planning is basically the process of how we go about creating menus, either menus for the house, menus for a restaurant, menus for an event. Um, so the idea today is just to look at the basic points we're gonna be um, considering when we actually plan a menu. Um, so if you look at the menu as a, as, a, as a tool of business, as something to sell, because uh, it is the main thing you have in a restaurant which actually draws your clientele. The menu is the product you are selling. Um, and obviously, you want to have a menu that is going to be attractive for them and obviously it's going to be reasonably priced. Um, right, let's go on. So, there's going to be obviously a few different types of menus we can actually look at for this purpose. Um, you have different menus, you have a la carte menus, you have the jour menus. Uh, so, a la carte menu basically is a menu where the prices of each dish on the menu is mentioned. Uh, the the, the jour menu is a menu that's obviously daily. Jour is day in French. So that means that the jour menu changes every day. Then you go on to cycle menus and cycle menus are basically for institutions. If you have a school or a hospital, you would have a cycle menu maybe for a month. So every day of the month, the menu changes. And then the first day of the next month is again the first day of the the original menu. So you're starting day one all the way to day three, that's your cycle menu. Then a static menu is like if you go to McDonald's and you, you look up and you see that menu on the board or uh, Kentucky or any of these places. That is a static menu. It doesn't really change a lot over time. They might add one or two items, but the core ingredients, the core dishes are going to stay the same. Then if you look at a fixed or set menu, so this is usually a menu where you get at a um, 
the type of restaurant where basically they're going to give you dishes and courses and you basically pay one price for all those courses. That's a set menu. You don't have the option to choose any items. It's already decided for you. Then uh, beverage menu is obviously for any drinks or beverages, either um, some places you have water menus, you have coffee menus, tea menus, you have alcohol menus, you have juice menus. So these are all beverage menus. Then obviously cocktail menu is uh, maybe at a bar or a hotel, then uh, they have options for you to actually mix uh, certain alcohols together to create types of drinks, and they would have a menu there that actually guides you. Uh, then you have dessert menu. Obviously, dessert menu is all your sweet items. Um, so anything that is obviously sweet, usually is half the main meal is going to be on, the, on a dessert menu. So just for the guys joining now, welcome to our session today. Uh, the topic is going to be um, menu planning. Okay. So then we go into the next section. So just some breakdown of what we're going to be doing in this, in this uh, course, some of the topics we'll be discussing. Obviously, there's menu planning and menu planning and principles, which we will then uh, discuss point by point so you can understand which things we actually consider when we plan a menu. Then also we look at the nutritional side. Obviously, we, can, we can't just do a menu with a lot of fat or a menu with a lot of sugar or a menu with uh, only protein. So we have to look at what is the nutrition because what is the menu? Menu is food. What is food? Food is there to actually uh, nourish people. Then uh, we'll look at obviously food cost. Again, if you're going to be doing a menu, again, this is going to be something that you will be selling. So it is a product. So you have to understand what is the cost of that product and then uh, how much you can actually sell it for. And then we'll just do an example of recipe costing. Um, basically, if you're going to be doing a menu, you obviously going to have recipes. And with the recipe, you need to know how much it's actually going to cost you to actually produce that menu. Okay, so let's look at the, the different principles. Now, um, so these are different things we need to look at. So obviously, uh, first one I would say is nutritional value. So if you are buying any products, usually on the packaging, you will see there is a nutritional fact sheet to give you a breakdown of calories, uh, fats, if there's cholesterol, if there's sodium. Uh, most things have sodium, which is salt. Uh, what is the carbohydrates, and then what is obviously vitamins, minerals, and things like that. So we need to understand what nutrients an ingredient is going to add to our dish, which is then going to add to our menu, okay? Uh, next one is age of the market. So also we have to think about who are we actually making this menu for? Um, is it, are we cooking for babies in a school? Are we cooking for children? Um, uh, young adults, mature adults, um, people that are more older, people that are you know, very much aged, because that's going to be a point where how much energy do they need? Do they need energy? How much protein do they need? They need do they is the building is the body building, or is it basically just maintenance? So children are growing, and uh, they have a high level of activity, so they need protein, they need carbohydrates, they need um, energy and obviously minerals and vitamins. Then the people that, that are fully grown adults, they basically just need body maintenance. So the protein level they need is less. And then based on their, their physical activity, their um, energy value is, is then required. Then we're looking at old people who are obviously, you know, their energy level is much less. So they would impact them be needing less uh, energy, they will also be needing less protein because they're not building their bodies, they're just basically maintaining. So they have nutrients, minerals, vitamins, all these types of things. Okay. Well, the next one. A physical activity basically is how busy are we? Are we sports people? Are we people that are sitting in an office? Um, so based on our physical activity, if we have higher physical activity, we will need more protein to rebuild our muscles. Uh, we will need more energy to sustain us. We will need more water and sodium because if we have higher activity, we're going to basically be sweating a lot more. So that obviously is going to basically 
um, fed into that. Then economic considerations. So the people we are basically planning this menu for this restaurant for the, the market who's coming to actually eat at the restaurant or uh, people are going to be buying these dishes. You know, what is the economic situation we need to look at? You know, um, the market we choose, what is this? What is their income? Uh, what is their um, sensitivity to prices? Okay. So depending on the market we are looking for, we need to obviously keep this in mind. And if you go... Next one is time. So time is, is going to be a factor in, you know, if I'm preparing a, a menu, how much time do I actually have to make those dishes? How much time do the people actually have to eat those dishes? If we're doing a lunch menu, people have going to have less time because they're working, they take a break for lunch, and then they come having the meal. So those things are easy of course to prepare, easy to serve, and then easy to eat. In the time, it's going to be different. Breakfast time is going to be different. So the menu that we are doing um, relevant to the time of day will then be um, a factor of time. And just, I'm not, just going back to energy value requirements, so... Um, we have to understand that food is fuel. So the, the balance of nutrients and the carbohydrates and energy in the food is obviously going to be um, a strong basic for many, many people. So this is quite a strong um, aspect we have to look at. Then seasonal, seasonal availability and seasonal eating habits. So if you look at the year um, ahead of us, we're going to have certain days, we're going to have celebration days, so there's going to be uh, different types of menus, there's going to be certain foods that are um, not available certain times of the, of the year, there's certain foods that we will obviously use more in certain menus um, during during the year, other, day, other times not, you're going to have summer, you're going to have um, Spring, you're going to have autumn, you're going to have winter. So all these are going to be affected. Then, if we go on to the next one, so here we have religion, region, religion, culture, people, different regions of the world. We're going to have obviously um, different. Um, Different cultures. So different cultures. So if you look at the UAE, obviously there is uh, the religion is mostly Muslim, and in this uh, religion, the culture is that certain foods are eaten certain times of the year, certain um, celebrations like Ramadan. There's certain dishes you always find in Ramadan, and obviously there's certain foods they are, they do not eat based on the religion. So every religion is going to have that. Um, in Christianity, on Fridays, in some cases they prefer that uh, you eat more fish than meat. Um, every religion is going to have its own um, specific cultural patterns and things that are based on, on that religion. Then if we go on to the next one. Then obviously likes and dislikes. Uh, again, some people, uh, they have certain foods they like and certain foods they don't like. So obviously you would have to have an understanding of your market or who you're cooking for the things they like, the things they dislike. So again, going back to the age, certain age groups have certain foods they like. The younger, younger kids, they don't like vegetables so much. Um, the older, older people, they don't like sugar so much. So um, understanding this is important for um, when you're obviously planning a market, uh, your menu. And then satiety. What is satiety? Is Obviously, the amount of food we eat is going to make us feel full. So certain foods will make us feel full faster than other foods. So uh, things like pasta we'll eat, but it will quickly, um, it'll quickly basically make us feel hungry again. Some foods like meat or things that take longer to digest will obviously make us feel full for longer. So this obviously is another thing to uh, keep in mind. Then when you actually create the menu, um, there's a few specific points we want to look at. So striving for balance. If we say we want a menu that is balanced, then we want to look at, again, this is based on the nutrients and obviously on the flavor. So based on that, we have to consider how we can balance it. Again, we've spoken about nutrients. Now with flavor, what do we use? How much salt do we use? How much sugar do we use? Um, 
how much spicy ingredients do we use? So all these types of things are going to give us a balance. Some ingredients need to be uh, more mild flavor. Some ingredients can be more salty. Some ingredients can be more spicy. Some ingredients can be more salt, uh, sugary. Okay, so that obviously give you more of a balance. Um, and then obviously, you know, how much healthy fats are you putting in your menu? Um, how much fiber is there? Because fiber is important for our digestion. Um, how do we balance the vitamins and the minerals? Um, so these things, so basically there's, a, there's a, a great variety of things to think about when you're planning a menu, when you're looking for balance, balance in nutrition, balance in flavor um, is quite important. And let's try and get to the next one. Variety, so variety is going to be um, variety of foods we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to have salad items, we're going to have vegetable items, we're going to have pulses. Uh, there's going to be rice, there's going to be bread, there's going to be pasta, um, there's going to be fruit, there's going to be um, like meat, uh, fish. So all these types of things can come in and that's going to basically give you variety. Variety also is going to give you variety of foods to look at, variety of foods to actually taste, and then variety of ingredients um, for the nutrition that we need. Okay, so variety is important because if you eat the same thing every day, also it, it does affect you mentally because we do have a, quite a strong relationship with food. Um, and if we obviously have variety, then I think our relationship with food is much more healthy. Then contrast. So obviously we need balance, we need variety, but we also need contrast. We need contrast in, in color. Um, we need contrast in texture because we, when we're actually eating the food, we are, are actually, we sense the texture and the way that we, 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 we chew it and we swallow it, all that. So that's also important. Some foods we want to be soft, some foods we want to be crispy, some foods we want to be crunchy, some foods we want to be dry, some foods we want to be moist. So all these types of things are going to um, come into play. And then obviously, you know, um, the contrast in flavor. So you're going to have spicy or you're going to have sour or you're going to have more bland taste or rich flavorful taste or uh, salty or sweet. So these things all come in um, to when we are talking about balance and contrasting. Okay. Then next one. <clears throat> So the color that we have on the plate, consider what you're actually going to be having on the plate, what you're actually going to be serving, what the person is going to be seeing. So if we look at the picture there, we have a croissant with um, poached egg. We also have there's some crunchy lettuce, this avocado, and then you have the color of the actual croissant. So all this um, you need to obviously consider. There's a plate with pasta and seafood pasta with uh, mussels and uh, all kinds of shells. There's tomato. There's also the um, uh, parsley or the herbs. Then you have on the middle here, you have a salad with chicken and then there's yellow tomatoes. There's some green uh, herbs. There's also red radish. So all these types of things, basically what picture are you actually seeing? You know, when you're looking at food on a plate, it has to give you appetite, it has to be inviting. Um, for you to want to eat it, obviously. So eye appeal comes back to the same thing, um, how you actually put the items on the plate, you know, the way that you present it. So the planning is going all the way to the place where the guest actually receives that plate and how, you know, what is their interaction with, with it visually? What are they actually seeing? How does it, how does it um, please them? That is also quite important. Then planning the diet. Um, if we look at the triangle on the right hand side. Now this triangle is called the food pyramid, okay? So what this represents is when we actually plan a meal, um, we have to look at what is the, the ratio of ingredients to each other, ratio in the sense of, of quantity. So if we're gonna be looking at this um, food pyramid, you'll see the bottom part is all the things made from wheat uh, and your carbohydrate rich, rich ingredients, so your breads, your pasta, um, there's some puddings and things as well. So this is where all your starches, all your main flours are coming. Then the next uh, bigger, bigger um, size shape is going to be your vegetables, your fruits. So this is going to be all your minerals, your nutrients are going to come from it. So getting back to the bottom, so you have first you have your carbohydrate uh, level, then you have your minerals and vitamins level, 
And then the next one, you have your dairy and your, your fish. So here you have your, um, your healthy fats. So the fats that you're actually adding into the diet, so you're going to have your um, nutrients, obviously, from these groups as well. And here you're going to have your calcium, so you have your fats, your, your proteins from seafood, and then also your calcium. Okay. Then the, the next layer up is your meat. So you're going to have all your, your red meat, your chicken, your beef, your lamb, your goat, um, pork, all these types of items are going to come from this uh, section. And then the last one is your main oil, your frying frying oil, all these types of things. So if you basically create your menu and your dishes to follow this ratio of um, ingredients um, quantity, so then it's going to be more balanced. Obviously, also, you're going to need water. Um, so obviously, add to all this, okay? Right, let's go on to the next one. So now, so we've spoken about the the considerations how to plan the menu okay so we've looked at all the aspects there now we need to look at the cost side because obviously we can create a menu but now we have to know how much is this going to cost us to actually produce these dishes and then what can we actually sell it for okay so here's just a basic example of um, a pricing strategy based on the cost so the cost of the item is going to be used as the uh, base for the calculation. So in this case, um, a good food cost percentage for any restaurant is going to be between 25 and 30%. If you have a, a restaurant that um, you basically want, your market is high, high level people that are earning a lot of money, they will spend a lot of money, then this percentage can even be lower. If you have a market where you're focusing on people that, you know, their salaries are less, they're not earning as much money, your Food cost percentage will be higher. So the one I selected is just in the middle of the two to give you just an example. Okay, so here we're looking at food cost between 25 and 30 percent. So we're going to use 30 percent for this example. So on the example, you see there the the formula basically says food cost item. So that's the cost of the food item divided by the desired food cost percentage. So if we say for our restaurant we want it to be 30 percent, we use it as 30 percent. So then there you see. Uh, on the example, so you have the four dirhams 25 is the cost of the item, and then the food cost percentage you've selected is 30%. So if I divide the food cost item by the 30%, then that gives me a price of 14.17. But it's it's a little bit of a difficult number, 14.17. So basically, what we can do is we can adjust it to give a more uh, attractive uh, price figure, and in this case, it's 13.99. Okay. So this is a basic, a basic way of calculating your price, and this is based on food cost percentage. There are other, there are other strategies where you use uh, percentages for each item that you are actually adding in your cost, um, but we're not going to really focus on that one so much. Okay, so let's look at, I think I have an example here for you guys to actually try as well. Okay, so there is a selling price calculation example. I don't know. Um, so here we have food cost as 30%. So what I want you guys to do is actually try this example, and then we'll see if, if uh, we understand actually what is happening. So for the example, we have 30% food cost. We have a chicken dish of adobo, which costs us 8 dirhams 90 to actually prepare. So the cost of the food item is 8 dirhams 90. Uh, the food cost percentage is 30%. So could you guys try and actually um, do the calculation and see if you come up with a, a figure and then we'll try and um, compare with each other what actually is the figures that we got. Okay, so you guys can actually try that. So if you guys have done the calculation, the calculation I did, 
Um, the initial figure I got was 29.67. And as I said before, we do adjust the price to make it more visually appealing. So then I adjust it to 29.99, okay? So if you guys can try that and then see if you guys come up with the same price. So when you guys come up with the price, just send me a message in the chat and then I can check um, what you guys have got and then we can just compare. Okay, anybody got any prices? You guys do the calculation. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so while you guys are doing the calculation, I'm just gonna continue and then just do a few more points of discussion. So that was basically the calculation we did was for a dish, okay? Now, obviously to actually come to that point where we have where we have the, the cost uh, for this dish, we have to obviously look at each ingredient. Now, some ingredients, when you use them, when you buy them, you can use them as they are, okay? When you buy um, a meat that is already cut, basically you can use it as it is. If there's no bones, you can use it as it is. But then if you come to things like chicken, chicken has got bones in it. So um, you have to consider the bones as something that you can't actually eat, okay? Um, things like onion, when you have an onion and you need to peel the onion, so you're going to be losing some of the item. So you can only eat an onion, you can only eat about 60%. Okay. So that um, amount you can eat is called an edible portion. So basically, that is the part of the, the ingredient you can actually eat. Um, onions is about 60%, edible portion. Chicken is about 75%. So every, every ingredient that you use on a menu is going to have an edible portion. Um, if it is pre-produced, usually it's 100%. If you have the liquids in a bottle, it's close to 100% because in most cases, you there's always a little bit of something left in the bottle. So you can obviously keep that in mind, okay? Um, so cost and price calculation for recipes require edible food yield specification. So for every item you're gonna use, you can actually find that yield specification online. Um, in the course, what we'll do is I'll actually give you a recipe and then I'll ask you um, find the edible uh, food yield specification for these items, then calculate the edible portion, then I'll give you the prices per unit for the items, and then you can actually go and calculate the cost per ingredient and then the cost for the whole recipe, and then I'll give you a food cost percentage, and then you can actually calculate the selling price for this, um, this recipe. Okay, let's see, we have some people still waiting to come into our chat. Okay, All right, let me go on to the next one just to give you the, another example. So this example is basically based on the, the yield, edible yield I've spoken about. So here we have an um, example of we need, um, a recipe needs like one kilogram of onions to by 10 by one gram portion. So we need a, basically we need a kilogram of edible onions for this dish because we need to break it into 100 gram portions. Um, so like I said, I looked up the yield for onions at 60%. So basically to understand that, so for an onion, um, we have 60% yield, and then we have obviously, meaning we can eat 60% of an onion and 40% of it's gonna be trimmings and waste, okay? So if I have to get one kilogram of actually 
yield of edible yield of onions so i need to actually buy more uh, than one kilo to actually take into account for the waste so um, so if i purchase edible yield for one kilogram of onions i have to purchase there's a calculation so obviously i need 100 percent so there's where the 100 comes in so 100 times one and then i divide it by the yield percentage so basically easy way is you take the 100 divided by your 60 percent uh, and then that gives you for this case which we have one kilo uh, to start with because 1.67 kilo of onions we have purchased so for any item you're going to be buying and the, the the total edible yield you need so that yield you'll take times it by 100 and divided by the yield percentage of the food item you actually work okay so just to continue so basically uh onions usually cost around six dirhams a kilo and then obviously to actually create enough onion to have a hundred a one kilo yield it's going to basically cost us actually uh 10 dirhams so we take the the new uh, quantity we need to buy obviously times six which is the price per kilo and that gives us 10 dirhams so due to the 60 percent edible yield the food cost per kilo has gone from six kilos to 10 kilos for us to actually purchase, okay? And then let's see what else we have. Okay, so here is just a actual uh, recipe that I've taken just to show you um, some further into this topic of the yield and then the actual ingredients and then the price and then calculating the cost. So on the left, you'll see we have ingredients um, we have chicken, bay leaf, soy sauce, vinegar, garlic, oil, sugar, salt, and pepper. So here we're making actually a chicken adobo dish. Okay, so that's a list of all the ingredients we're going to be needing. The next column is the quantity. Now keep in mind this recipe we're going to basically want to do 100 portions. So we basically prepare this recipe to feed 100 people. If you do a recipe costing, you have to have a, a amount of a portion you're going to be creating in mind and basically all your recipes you standardize to that amount of portions okay so the second column is our weight so we have uh, obviously items that are measured in kilograms we have there and then the next column is our volumes so items measured in liquids put there and the liters so then you have also the next one is your ap so that's your as purchased price so this is what we paid per kilo for the item that we purchased, okay? Next one is the, is the unit of the items. And then the next one is the yield percentage. You'll see some of those are 100%, uh, some of them are lower. So you have chicken at 75% because that's its yield percentage when you actually trim off the fat and the skin and the bones. Uh, bay leaf, you buy as it is, you use it as it says 100. Now soy sauce, vinegar, and oil, usually there's gonna be a, the small amount of the actual liquids um, stuck in the bottle. So you're not going to get 100% always. So there you could put 99% of your, your, your yield percentage. Garlic, um, that's 95% because you lose about 5% in trimmings. Okay. Now, in this uh, recipe format, there's going to be calculations already placed, put in for you. So in um, the edible portion price per unit, there's already a calculation that, that allows for the difference in yield from 100% and under. So basically you'll see your, your as purchase with 18 dirhams a kilo for the chicken for this example, yield is 75%. So now the edible uh, portion price is 22, 22.50. So it's obviously, it's taking into account that 25% that you are not able to use. So then obviously there's a calculation for the 30 kilos you've done and then gives you the price. So it does the same thing for all the items. And then it will give you the total. So it gives you a cost per recipe for the total. That's 723.24. And then the cost per portion, it takes the 100 um, portions you've, you've allocated and it divides your cost per recipe through that. And that gives you the 723. Now, so our cost per portion is 723. Now to create the selling price, um, we basically do a calculation and then it shows us actually that our food cost percentage is 32.89. Um, the price is going to be 21.70, but then to adjust it to get a more uh, appropriate price, we make it 
up to 21.99. And in this recipe, it also shows you there's a serving size proportion, which is 322 grams. Uh, and that's just for the, obviously, just for the chicken adobo. Uh, you will have additional weight for the rice, additional weight if you have vegetables, if you have a starter, if you have um, a sweet, if you have any uh, drinks or beverages you have as well. Okay. Then let's see what else we have. Okay. So this is just a basic uh, overview of the things we'll be talking about in the course. So we will basically be focusing on, on the different um, things we need to consider when we are actually planning a menu. We have to look at the considerations when we actually create the menu. Um, you know, balance and all that. And then we have to look at obviously the cost uh, aspect of uh, creating the recipes, um, costing them, how much do they actually cost us, and then obviously calculating our selling price for that. So in the in the course, we'll do more calculations. We'll do like we'll do a whole recipe. Uh, we'll take it from the beginning all the way through to the point where we actually need to go purchase the items to the point we need to actually uh, create the selling price and serve these. Um, the dishes okay now i've not seen let me see uh you need to you guys that have been doing calculations um like i said you can try and send me your answers on the chat section if you want to try that um now what i will do is i will leave you guys let you guys ask questions if you like so what i will do is i will go down the list uh i will unmute your mic and then I'll ask you if you have a question. If you don't have one yet, we can always come back to you. Okay. So let's go to Annabelle Evangelista. You can unmute unmute your mic and ask a question if you like. Does anybody else would like to ask a question? You are free to unmute your mic and then ask me a question regarding the course. Um, regarding the the way that you plan the menu, regarding how you do your calculations. Um, if there's any questions, I'll, I'm, I'm, uh, you're welcome to ask it if you like. We have the time now to discuss. Is there any more questions from the participants? You can actually um, ask directly Chef Charles. Okay, so thank you so much, Chef, uh, for your time as well, and for all the participants right now. We hope that uh, we could still keep in touch with you for the upcoming course, and our um, schedule of the first batch would be on uh, starts on May 7, uh, so we'll keep in touch with you as early as possible. Yep. Okay, for the timing, we will update you as well, Miss Annabelle. Yeah, we'll update you. <clears throat> yeah. So thank you, guys. Thank you for for joining and then hopefully we'll see you guys uh, or we'll speak to you next week for those that are going to be enrolling. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Looking forward to CCIS, a step closer to success. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you, nice everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Irene. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.